it wouldn't be a lot of fun if we had to create every bit of game functionality from scratch. Construct2, as a game engine, comes with built-in functionality, and these are called behaviors. Construct2 allows you to add prepackaged functionality to your games by assigning behaviors to your object types. Behaviors get you up and running fast because you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Many otherwise complicated game mechanics and features have already been coded for you. All you have to do is assign behaviors to your object types and refine them as appropriate. Construct2's built-in behaviors still give you a lot of control. Most behaviors have properties you can set, and they can be controlled using Construct2's robust event system. Behaviors can even be added to families to further simplify your development. Again, treating individual things as a group has huge advantages. Here are some of the most useful Construct2 behaviors that you will want to consider including in your games. For example, the solid behavior allows you to give an object the physical properties of a solid object. When something is a solid, it can be walked upon. For example, it can not be moved or walked through like a wall. Bound to layout prevents an object from leaving the layout. You probably get the picture. Construct2's behaviors are intuitively named and they are also well documented in Construct2's behavior reference. Let's take a minute to show you how to work with behaviors in Construct2. I have my game here and I'm going to go ahead and run the layout. As you can see, my alien falls to the bottom of the layout and does not walk on top of the grass. And this is because in my current game, the grass is not a solid. So a solid is an example of an extremely important behavior and construct two. So this is how you might use a behavior in construct two. Let's say I want to find my grass and make it solid. Find your object type, right click, and choose behaviors. You will see that there is a behaviors dialog that pops up. If you click the plus icon, you'll see all the available behaviors, attributes, general, movements. There's all kinds of great built-in functionality that you can choose from. For my grass blocks, I want to choose solid. So I'm assigning the solid behavior to my grass object type and click add. Okay, now if I run the layout, my alien walks on top of the grass because my grass has a solid behavior. And what that does is it gives it all the uh, properties and uh, characteristics of a physical solid. Another example, my bees right now, pretty boring. They don't really do anything. What I could do is I could go up to my bee object type, right click behaviors, and I could add, let's say, the sign behavior. You may recognize sign from your math class, the classic wave. And as you can see, once I add sign the behavior to my B object type over in properties for the B, there's another set of properties called sign. And what I can do is I can configure this prepackaged functionality. Let's say I want it to move horizontally, let's say vertically. And let's say I want it to have a period of 10 seconds to go through a full um, iteration of movement. And let's say magnitude is the number of pixels it moves. So now if I go and run my game, my bees should have the sign behavior and they should go up and down. And it should take 10 seconds for them to travel 100 pixels. Let's see if that worked. Awesome. So it's that simple to add functionality using behaviors in Construct2. One of the things to keep in mind is that you can control each instance individually. Let's say I wanted this guy to only travel 50 pixels. This guy I wanted to travel 10. This guy I wanted to travel, let's say, 75. And this guy, you know, I didn't really want him to travel at all. Not only can I assign the behavior to my object type, I can control the properties, the individual properties by instance, by every individual object. If I go back and run, now you will see 
that each one of the bees has the behavior, but it's just a little bit different. As you continue your work with Construct2, you will learn that these behaviors can be used in your event sheets. For example, this right here uses Construct2's built-in platform behavior. This is a very robust, very important behavior that comes with Construct2. In this case, I've coded the uh, touch controls of a game to simulate the player moving right and left. I didn't have to code all of the movements for my player. I assigned the platform behavior to my player and then used all of the actions that came with that built-in functionality in my code. Now, the most important thing to remember is that you don't want to be assigning these behaviors on an object by object basis. Right now, for example, my grass object has the solids behavior. I'm gonna get rid of that. And what I would rather do is have families like solids and then find my grass block, add them to the solids family that I created. This family will have a behavior so that any object type I place within the family will inherit the behavior that I gave to the family. Once again, treating common things as a group will really streamline your game development. In this case, I created a solids family, assigned it the solid behavior, and any object type I place inside that family will inherit the solid behavior.